John's gospel mostly focuses on and gives the most details actually about Jesus' time with Pilate. And that's the section we focus on today with what you might call three portraits of Jesus that we look at, three descriptions of Jesus here in this section that call us, that beckon us yet again to worship Him. The Jewish leaders had brought Jesus to Pilate because they wanted Him killed, right? They they made that clear. They wanted Jesus killed, and they did not have the power to do so. And and since they feared Jesus' popularity, they came to Pilate to get get Pilate to to, to crucify Him, to, to accuse Him and to send him off, even though they had no true charge against Jesus. To know truth is to know Jesus, and to know Jesus is to know truth. So we might sum up verses 33 to 38 with just this first point. Jesus is the spiritual king of truth. That's how we should know him. That's how he reveals himself to Pilate here. Jesus is the spiritual king of truth. I mean, of course, he is the universal creator, king, overall, but the point that he made to Pilate here is that in a special way, he is the spiritual king of truth. And his kingdom is a spiritual kingdom, and his kingdom is a kingdom of truth. All who are of the truth, who believe and know the truth, who walk in the truth are subjects of his kingdom. All who trust in him alone and his revelation of truth are born spiritually into that kingdom and will live forever with him. No truth. Do not fear speaking truth, because truth is the necessary and sufficient tool of the Spirit to lead others to Jesus. That's how the kingdom advances. If you will seek truth in Jesus, you must know this other thing about Jesus that we see next in the passage. Secondly, that Jesus is the sinless substitute. We can find hope and joy and rest for our souls knowing that Jesus, secondly, is the sinless substitute. First, he is the spiritual king of truth. Secondly, he is the sinless substitute. Look back at at verse 38 of what Pilate said about Jesus. He first said, what is truth? And then when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him. No guilt. No charge. No ground for accusation. No wrong. No fault, no sin. Perfect. Why is he here? Jesus was sinless. Even when he was examined and accused by those who hated him, they could find nothing. Pilate made it clear, not guilty. And he tried to find a way then to release Jesus. And yet, there was this crowd gathering outside his residence that he wanted to appease. And so Pilate cared maybe a little bit about justice, but not nearly as much as he cared about his own protection, about his own power, about his own reputation, about his own circumstances and situation. And so Pilate did not do the right thing here and say, there's no guilt, I release him. And so see here a third point about this Jesus. Jesus is the supreme Son of God. He's not helpless here. He's the spiritual king of truth, number one. He's the sinless substitute, number two. And number three, he is the supreme Son of God. No one can stop him. He is supreme. He could be trusted as the sovereign ruler as he faced unjust rulers. He can still be trusted as the sovereign ruler when unjust rulers rule today. Though evil is called good and good called evil, as Isaiah 5 laments, back then and in Jesus' time and now, God is still on the throne. His Son, His promises can still be trusted. And even Pilate's further attempts to release Jesus ended up being helpless. Why? Because God had planned this. God had planned to allow these Jews to commit this atrocity. Look at verses 12 to 16 in the final skirmish and sentencing. He showed his supremacy even in those final hours because he would not let this plan be stopped. Much as Pilate might try, Jesus was going to the cross to die for sinners. So see, he is the spiritual king of truth. He is the sinless substitute and he is the supreme son of God. That's the real Jesus, and I pray you know him. I pray you worship him. 
I pray you rest your soul in Him. And if you do know Him, I pray you are bold to speak for Him. But listen, don't try to be neutral. Don't try to be neutral about Jesus. That's what Pilate tried to do. He tried to dance back and forth. He tried to figure out what would be the best posture to take. You cannot be neutral. You can't be neutral at work. You can't be neutral at home. You can't be neutral at school. You can't be neutral with relatives. You can't be neutral with friends. You can't be neutral with coworkers. You can't be neutral with neighbors. You can't be neutral about Jesus. Trying to be neutral about Jesus is following the path of Pilate straight into denying Christ. Mark 8, 35 to 37, Jesus said, Whoever wishes to save his life shall lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel shall save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? What can a man give in exchange for his soul? What is the state of your soul? Do you know King Jesus without any neutrality? You bow the knee and worship Him and stand and speak for Him.